Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry for the delay. We ran into quite a few problems with CentOS, and it was literally just one thing after another. So today I'm going to be showing you how to install Ubuntu Server on a virtual machine using Oracle VM. Download the ISO file from the Ubuntu website. I had tested this beforehand to make sure it would work, but for this video I'm going to be making a new one to show you how it's done. Once inside Oracle VM, click New and you'll be prompted to select the name of your machine and its operating system. Mine was already selected as a Linux distribution and it specified that it was Ubuntu 64-bit. So we're going to be moving on to memory size next. 2 gigs is enough for the kind of work that we'll be doing. Now set up your virtual hard disk. Ubuntu Server only requires about 2 gigabytes worth of space to install all of its features, so you're not going to need a lot. Up next, we need to tweak a few features, and we need to mount the ISO file that we just downloaded. Now select Storage, and head over to the empty virtual disk drive. That's where we're going to be mounting our ISO file. To make things easier, I'll set the network settings to NAT so that it uses the host computer's IP address. You can now start the machine, and when prompted, press Enter on Ubuntu Server. Oh man, this is so boring. Yeah, I know, it's supposed to be educational. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's the voices, you know. Now don't be fooled by the video, this process took about an hour and a half to do. The name of the game is Patience, Determination, and Reinforcing Bad Habits. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, there we go. Now you can select your language. You can choose either of the ones ending in ski, but I'm going to be using a lish one. Now you can set up your network configuration, choose a different download mirror, and set up your disk partitioning. Feel free to be creative when setting up your profile. I'm going to be naming everything Pugi, uh, except for my password, that's going to be different. You can set up SSH for secure remote login to your server. Here, you'll find a wide variety of different tools for your server, such as PowerShell on Linux, or the AWS command line, and a bunch of other things that I just, I don't know what they do. Some IT guy you are. It's all about learning, man. I'll, I'll learn one day. Now we're waiting for the server to wrap up its installation. Oh, right. Don't forget to unmount that ISO file, or else the server's just gonna keep booting from it. Is this guy slow or what? Once you're finished, you can press enter to reboot and have access to your new server. Now being a normal Linux server, you're only going to have the command line interface. So, we're going to download a bunch of packages in order to get the Ubuntu desktop look. Log in with your credentials, and use the clear command to clean up the screen. Uh, let's 
let's see what's next, what's next. Um, let's try system dot out dot print line uh, beans. No, 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 no. I don't think that works. First things first is to update the packages using a sudo apt update command. Once it is finished updating, you can go ahead and clean the screen again. Now for the package that we need to get the desktop look. Type in sudo apt get install task cell. Now you have a choice between two display managers. There's Slim and LightDM. I've only used and seen Slim, so we're just gonna go with that one. Everything should be up and ready to run the task cell package. This is what we're going to use to install all the necessary items to give this server the Ubuntu desktop feel. You'll see a big pink box. Scroll down the item list until you find Ubuntu desktop. Then press space to check it off. Then press tab and then space again to execute the command. Now this package install takes quite a while, so I sped it up for you so you didn't have to wait like I did. Once it's finished, Enter the reboot command, cross your fingers, pray, make a sacrifice, do whatever you have to, because there's no way of knowing when anything's gonna work in Linux. Well that's a good sign. Enter your username and password to log into your desktop. Huh, this is... this doesn't look good. Aha! It works! And of course it works! Because I'm a professional. Oh, let's see. This 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 has to be made easier to look at. Oh, hey, that background kind of looks like a. Let me try scaling it up and then changing the resolution. That should work. Um, where's display? I need to find display. Yep, it's May. It is May. Oh, that's a lot of options. Not really sure which one to pick. Okay, that should work. Yep, that looks better. Looks like we have a problem. I think I'm just gonna ignore it.
Okay, now we can open up our browser and head over to the Plex website. Scroll down once you're in and click on Get Plex. Be sure to select the media server side and then select your operating system. Once it's finished downloading, open up your terminal and navigate to the downloads folder. You can do this by typing in dir to find out what directory you're in, and then use the cd command to navigate to whichever directory your downloads is in. Now copy the name of the downloaded file. And then on the terminal, type in sudo apt install dot forward slash and then paste the name of the file. Oh dear, that wasn't supposed to happen. Ah, this download takes forever anyways. Might as well just toy with a few things until then. Man, I really need to get rid of this startup window. And look, while I was fooling around, the download finished. Now let's check if everything installed correctly. We can do this by typing in the command sudo systemctl, which stands for system control, and then the word status. Scroll down until you find plexmediaserver.service. If you don't find that, then you probably didn't download correctly. As you can see, it installed correctly, so now we just have to check if it can enable. You can now clear up the terminal and then type up the command sudo systemctl enable plexmediaserver.service. To check if it worked, just type in sudo systemctl is enabled plexmediaserver.service. And it looks like it works. And that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next video where we go over Plex optimization and setting up a file sharing service with Samba. Oh god, it's about time. I'm out of here.